No, he used to shove it. Man! A few weeks ago, I was unhappily perched in my nest being forced to watch Anarchia matches when my phone lit up and I didn't like what I saw. I saw a threat and a challenge from a man in the YouTube comment section. Now the hawk wouldn't normally take any notice of a challenge from some nobody in the comment section just trying to make a name off of mine. But this one, it had a personal touch. You see, I was walking down Midsummer Norton High Street the other day when I saw a strange man staring at me. Now this man's eyes were too close together, which normally denotes a mean streak in a person, and the hawk likes to think he's a pretty good judge of character. I knew Wes Briscoe sucked as soon as I saw him, and I got bad vibes from this guy as well. Next thing I know, a brick's whistling past my head. Now where I'm from in God's County, we count this as a challenge, not a pussy comment on YouTube. So you goof, I accept your challenge for the worst wrestling show of all time. And I won't say your name, because you aren't going to make your name off of mine. We're running a little competition, and it's winner stays on for the worst wrestling show of all time. It's the return of the how bad can it be belt. Say it twice or I'll smack you one until it's felt. The fans comment what they think is the worst wrestling episode of all time. We're grading on three pieces of criteria. Non-wrestling segments, match quality and overall entertainment levels. And no, not in a so bad that it's good kind of way. The current champion for the worst oh, wrestling man. show of all time is that TNA episode with six minutes of wrestling from 2011. Links in the description. So we're up against a show with pretty much no wrestling and constant Eric Bischoff segments. It's going to be hard to beat. So introducing the challenger, it's an episode of WCW Nitro from 5th of June 2000. The show starts out with Tank Abbott coming out of a car. He's a man whose nutsack has been squeezed so hard at this point that his voice has reached new heights and gone to a different dimension. Out walks Eric Bischoff, the leader of the Grey Crew. He's here with his friend Vince Russo and some little nerds. One of them happens to look like a depressed version of Shane Douglas. Bischoff has the microphone and he makes fun of the Millionaires Club. He puts Kevin Nash in a gauntlet match. Russo then gets his turn on the mic. He's looking well groomed here. Russo threatens Ric Flair and Bischoff says tonight he'll become a hardcore champion. They then threaten Goldberg who's watching backstage gritting his teeth. Russo then says he's got two words for him. You know, I'm used to seeing these shots at WWE and TNA, but I wasn't expecting it in WCW straight off the bat. Goldberg comes out and beats up the job of security team. Then even more the run out. I think I saw Chris Harris. They don't do anything though, even though there's about 20 of them. WCW Nitro brings you the smack of the week. Sponsored by all new Blonde for Men. If you're a brown haired potter, put some blonde in it. It makes you look potter. And it's Bill Goldberg right now, and he clotheslines two men, and then there's a depression, and Douglas, wham! This boy's gonna go down, he's going back to where he came from, and there's another kick, and then there's a spear, and then there's one, two, three, it's the jackhammer on this other guy, and these guys root dead. That was the WCW Smack of the Week, sponsored by Blonde Just For Men. Get it? Got it? Shove it. Backstage, the Grey Crew are complaining when... A wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. He's moaning about something. Kidman and Tory Wilson then walk in moaning. Everyone's moaning. It's screaming galore. It's over. Good. WCW World Tag Titles on the line now. The perfect event will be taken on Chronic. Have you ever seen a match between four more dislikable guys? I can't think of many matches I was less excited for. Brian Clark hits a pump handle on Palumbo, but they don't make a cover. The cat then walks out whilst the camera can completely miss a flip dive. Brian Adams hits a nice full Nelson slam before the perfect event worked together to stop him from getting any momentum. Palumbo hits a nice diving shoulder block from the top. I genuinely liked it, he flew like the hawk. The four guys are fighting outside the ring and the cat gets in the ring. Nobody knows what's going on. He starts attacking the referee and slightly forcing him to count the guys out of the match. Why did the referee need to be forced? They should have been counted out, it's the rules isn't it? They've been outside there for ages. The ref doesn't exactly finish counting, but the cat tells him to ring the bell and says the match is over. They were out there for ages, but I don't know how high the ref actually counted. Chronic tried to give him the high time, but Stasiak and Palumbo stop him. Chronic are about to do something with a table, but the camera cuts away. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a bad one, isn't it? In the back, Kidman is complaining and he calls Tory Wilson a dumb bitch. Or is it Major Guns? I always get these two blondes mixed up, I don't know why. 
In the back, Kevin Nash is bragging about being the last person to the building tonight. He says he's living up to his gimmick. Somewhere else in the back, misfits in action are being yelled at by Hugh Morris, and Major Guns walks up crying about what Kidman said. They threaten to beat up Kidman for her. Kevin Nash is with Goldberg somewhere else backstage. They're just nice, lovely friends, really. G.I. Bro out next, aka Booker T with M.I.A. He calls Kidman out and tells him he's going to show him how to treat a woman. The woman then walks out, and we also get the filthy animals, and the match is on. Kidman hits a big-time bulldog, but Booker throws him through the air. He hits a scissors kick and a spinner Rooney, but no cover is made. He corners Kidman and brings Major Guns into the ring. She wants to kick Kidman in the nutsack, but Tori Wilson stops her. Then Tori Wilson hits him in the nutsack, but it has zero effect. I guess because Kidman's a woman, as Booker said earlier. Book end and the match is over. The filthy animals do a beatdown. I really thought Hoovey was a scruffy crackhead looking girl here. It took me the whole segment to realise it was Hoovey. The leader of the Grey Crew is backstage carrying a trash can and he threatens Terry Funk. That man, the hardcore champion, is out to the ring now to take on the leader of the Grey Crew, who's accompanied by the cat. The cat does a cartwheel kick and nails Funk with a chair. Bischoff is playing with some nunchucks. Funk wakes up and takes the cat out. He wants to put Bischoff in the trash where he belongs and he finally hits him with it. The cat then suddenly drags the leader of the Grey Crew away from the ring and I guess this match is over. Funk runs after them throwing a trash can at them. It went 20 seconds. The commentary team don't know if the match is over or not. Tony Schiavone then says that they're stalling for time. <laughs> He's given up at this point. Out next is Miss Hancock aka Stacey Keebler. She's having a good old time dancing, but before she can get the mic and tell us what's wrong, she's interrupted by Mike Awesome and Kimberly. Kim's really good on the mic, to be fair. She tells Stacy to stop looking like such a stripper, and she hits her with a clipboard. Miss Hancock calls Kimberly fat. This certainly isn't true. They don't fight, and nothing happens. It was pointless. Before that segment can properly end, though, Funk is back at the top of the ramp with the leader of the Grey Crew in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> so this match is still rolling on. Funk hits a DDT, so I guess it's over now because we cut to the back. Wait, I don't know if it's over. Russo sends some more guys out to the ring. We then cut back to the ring and Funk is threatening to show Bischoff his ass. He's looking for the stink face, but the Mama Luke's run out. Big Vito takes out Funk whilst his white belly shines back at us. It's so white, it's fluorescent. The question is, how much whiter could it be? And the answer is none. They drape Bischoff's prone body across Funk and the referee counts to three. Oh god no, new hardcore champion is Eric Bischoff, the leader of the Grey Crew. Outside a stretch limo has pulled up, it's the nature boy with his family. Steiner is out now with Medeja and Shakira. I've not mentioned them since I did that Freaks video about a year ago. Let me know below, Medeja or Shakira. The Hawk Speak sure doesn't lie even if I try. We get a classic Steiner promo now which I have no doubt will be the highlight of this show. Someone has a sign saying best Nitro ever, I doubt that somehow. He seems to be taking on Vampira with the US title on the line. Steiner ducks a vamp kick and suplexes him across the ring. Steiner press slams vamp and it's not looking good for him. Vampira actually scores some offense with his kicks. They head outside and Steiner throws vamp into the barrier and starts smashing him with a chair. Then he randomly slams him through a table. Vamp sits on Tony Schiavone's lap looking annoyed. He's literally up then five seconds later. How isn't he her? Vamp hits Steiner with a chair and he pulls a goofy face at Steiner. They get back in the ring and Vamp hits a diving ass to the face from the top rope. Then he hits Steiner with a torch. Medeja does a crossbody from the top and then Vamp walks after her, trying to cover her own petrol. Then Sting walks out and he batters him. Sting literally smacks him into the ring. How's this match still going on? Steiner suplexes him and puts him in the Steiner recliner to end the match. Now it's over. Steiner and Sting wipe out the security geeks for the second time tonight. Out next, it's Tank, don't squeeze my nutsack Abbott. A man who doesn't look like a star, doesn't talk like a star, and sure couldn't wrestle like a star. He's taken on Bill Goldberg. Goldberg kicks him straight in the face, looking very reminiscent of that one he did to Bret Hart. Goldberg hits an awkward slam. He's looking for a spear, but Rick Steiner then comes out looking like a weed man, and he hits Goldberg with a chair. Tank tries to pin him with his foot, but it doesn't work. We're now in a handicap match situation, and the match again hasn't been thrown out. Eventually, Kevin Nash makes his way out and takes out Rick Steiner, whilst Bold Boy hits the spear. 
Goldberg kicks the jackhammer on Tank, who looks like a midget compared to Bill Goldberg. Thanks for coming, Tank. It's game over for you. Kimberly is on the mic in the back, saying that the show needs to be all about her and she'll be taking on Miss Hancock tonight. Slapnuts is out next. He's the world champion at this point, so he must be an important man. He's taking on the Stinger. Sting looks really in the mood for this one. Despite missing the splash, he takes Jarrett down a couple of times. Then he hits a powerbomb. He wants to put on the Scorpion Deathlock, but Jarrett kicks him out of the ring. Jarrett then picks up a chair and smashes Sting in the gut. Why does every match have to have weapons used? And why are the referees so useless? And why do the weapon shots not hurt? And as you can see, Sting's barely hurt, despite being hit in the gut with the chair 50 times. Sting suddenly sends Jarrett into the ring. The referee then decides to try and help Sting out, but it's not over. Wait, yes it is. Sting wins the world title just like that. The hardcore champion and the leader of the Grey Crew comes out and tells Sting close, but no cigar, because the title was never on the line. Sting, <laughs> he gets mad and punches Jarrett through the same table which was broken earlier on. I think it was made out of cardboard and they rebuilt it. This is so stupid. Sting locks on the Scorpion Deathlock and grabs Jeff Jarrett's favourite possession in the whole wide world, his guitar. He smashes Jarrett with it, which was strangely satisfying to watch. What an amazing world champion. He's carried off on a stretcher. Grey Man is screaming that WCW is nothing without Jeff Jarrett. It can't be very good then, can it? Mike Awesome is out now. He has a microphone, but he's just here to introduce Kimberly because he's apparently not an important person. This brings out Miss Hancock, who makes Kimberly sign a release form that says that she won't be in trouble no matter how much Miss Hancock hurts her tonight. This will be Stacey Keebler's first ever match. Her mystery partner is DDP. Kimberly's annoyed and says that she has a restraining order so the match can't happen. Turns out that that form she just signed, she should have read it. It somehow allows them to be able to touch each other again. What was her plan if she decided to actually read the form? Not much seems to be happening and Kimberly starts posing and then complaining on the microphone. Miss Hancock tries to have a go at doing that and she takes a cheap shot. Hancock hits a couple of snap mirrors and she slaps Mike Awesome. Paige gets the tag and comes in with a top rope clothesline. Awesome gets the advantage then with a suplex. I can't believe we're seeing some actual wrestling without people getting smashed in the face of a chair every five minutes. Awesome hits a splash and then he heads outside and oh no, why? I spoke too soon, he has a table. Just wrestle him normally, you're winning. Why would you interrupt the flow of the match to get a table, you mullet moron? Awesome hits a big splash from the top and the diamond man kicks out. Awesome is looking for a powerbomb, but Miss Hancock rips a part of her skirt off and Paige hits the cutter for the free, because Awesome's an idiot and gets distracted. Pamela Paul Shock is backstage, trying to interview the hawk about his nephew, the pigeon. They're feuding, but the hawk refuses to be interviewed. Then, oh no, it's Bischoff again. The leader of the Grey Crew is with Pidge Hogan. He says he wants to put his uncle for a table, and the Hawks music hits. We get Hollywood Hogan instead. He tells them to lower the cage because he wants to fight his nephew. The Hawk is battering his nephew left, right and centre. He brings out his weight belt and starts smashing the poor pigeon. They fight around the outside of the ring and then, oh, not again. Chair shot to the Hawk. They carry on fighting in the ring and then Hogan continues to attack with the chair. Leg drop on the chair and it's over in about two minutes. Billy Kidman immediately jumps in, but Hogan throws him over the top rope for a table, like a piece of trash. Vince Russo is backstage panicking because he's set to take on Ric Flair next. And that match is right now, it's another cage match as they call it, but it's more like a hell in a cell. Vince Russo is in the main event after Hogan, let that set into your heads. It's Ric Flair versus Vince Russo. Hell in a cell. And Russo is actually winning without cheating. Flair then strips Russo. Literally nobody wanted to see this. Flair punishes him with a bat drop. The nature boy drops his knees and Russo tries to escape to the outside. Flair is enjoying punishing Russo on the outside, but it doesn't last too long. David Flair then emerges from under the ring. Russo decks the referee for no reason at all. Reed Flair is on the outside of the cage biting Vince Russo. What am I saying? Flair Sr. beats up his son on the outside of the ring. David tries to do the turnbuckle flip on the floor for some reason. I don't know if he got confused. Russo is setting up a ladder in the ring, but he's really struggling. It's then revealed that there's a hole in the roof of the cage. Russo kicks Flair away and then he just climbs out whilst Flair stares at the ladder like a dumbass. Rick Flair and Vince Russo are then brawling on top of the cell. I never thought I'd say that. Flair stomps Russo back through the hole. It didn't look that good, it wasn't worth the effort. 
The ref then kindly helps Ric Flair come back into the ring. In the ring, Flair puts the figure four on, but Russo refuses to tap. Russo is fighting through the pain. He's been in the hold for about a minute at this point. What is this? David is trying to pull Russo towards the ropes. It's now been two minutes and he still hasn't tapped or passed out. Suddenly, <laughs> a pile of turd falls through the ceiling and covers everyone. This then causes a ref bump. They put the figure four on Ric Flair and they force him to be pinned. How could he not get up? Barely anything happened to him. Who tipped the turd over everyone? This truly is one of wrestling's biggest mysteries that's never been answered. This is really running that Impact episode hard for the worst of all time. This is a shocker, a shocker. And apparently there's more in the locker. You're in for a real treat now. It's Kevin Nash coming out. More Vince Russo. He says it'll be Kevin Nash in a gauntlet match. If he loses the match, he'll lose his title shot at the pay-per-view. No one is allowed to help Nash either or they'll be fired. Bear that in mind, it'll be relevant in a minute. It'll be Kevin Nash versus about 10 men. <laughs> Disco Inferno is first. Nash side slams him to beat him in about 5 seconds. Chris Candido then eats a big boot and a powerbomb. But Johnny the Bull's already in the ring. Everyone looks confused so the referee just counts the pin even though no one's getting pinned. This is a new type of pinning technique from Kevin Nash. Johnny the Bull then gets powerbombed and he's counted out. Big Vito gets powerbombed and he's out. Ray Ray then eats a boot and he's out. Ray Mysterio is beaten by a big boot in the year 2000. Now there's about 8 bigger guys on Nash and they won't be beaten as easily. Goldberg marches out now. He hits a double spear and carries on helping his little friend. I thought he wasn't allowed to help. Then the match is just over with no explanation. Did Nash win or was he DQ'd? Was Goldberg fired? Bischoff sort of answers that question. He says he's going to fire Goldberg on the next show. Goldberg says that if he does that, his ass will be next. And some fireworks go off to emphasise his prayer. <laughs> then the show ends. Oh god, this was genuinely bad. You know you're in trouble when Chronic versus Sean Stasiak and Chuck Palumbo is the best show of the night. There was so much of the Grey Crew that it made me sick. They were both in individual matches, and they both won them as well. And then we get two bad Hell in a Cell matches back to back. We had Vince Russo refusing to tap out to the figure four leg lock for two minutes. What idiot came up with that? We had the most ridiculous finish with the slime falling from the cell incident, and it was never explained why. And then that Kevin Nash match in the main event. That sure was poorly fought out to say the least. He beat five guys and didn't even need to properly pin any of them. I think we've got a new champion here. WCW Nitro, June 2000. Write that name on your hand and smack yourself in the gut because that's how I feel right now. If you think you know a worse show that can challenge this one for the how bad can it be belt, put it in the comment section down below and smack yourself one until it's felt. And if you give me a few months, I'll take a look. And if you don't, I'll give you my right hook.